How's it going, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the podcast. In today's episode, we are going to be talking about headphones, headphones in the gym, and what headphones I am currently using. So let's go ahead and jump right into it. So headphones for the gym are definitely a key thing when working out. I know that they are for me. I'm not exactly sure if it's something that is necessary for you, but whenever I'm in the gym, I just have a really hard time getting into that sort of workout flow or sort of that workout vibe with the music that they pick in the gym or the music that is played sort of over the over the intercom or over the loudspeakers inside of the gym. It's too random. It's just not the same flow. Sometimes I'm of a hip hop mindset. Sometimes I'm of a electronica or techno mindset. And even I'll even throw it back to like 90s R&B. Sometimes if I need to slow down a little bit, definitely for squatting like super heavy. Surprisingly enough, I'm not pumping through any, what would it be like, like hard rock or anything like that. I'm actually getting down with like R&B, like old school R&B, even Marvin Gaye and other things like that, sort of things that keep me mentally attuned and mentally focused on the movement that I have set ahead of me. And with that, music being such a key part of my workouts, headphones are definitely a must. They keep that music to just between me and whatever I'm listening to. And I I started out with Wired, much like probably everybody. I used the earbuds, the standard or the stock earbuds that came with my my iPhone. I listen to music in the gym through my phone. For those of you who use other apps like Spotify or anything like that, I'm sort of like a creature of habit. So I still use Pandora as my primary app. And yeah, it just... Started out with wired headphones and and just sort of as I was doing things like deadlifting and as I was doing things like squatting, I found that, well, even sometimes bench pressing, but I found that the headphone wire was just becoming more of an of an, a nuisance than anything else. And so I had to then look into wireless headphones and I didn't want to invest a lot of money early on. I think that the most I spent on my first set of wireless headphones was maybe $40. And they were like Motorola headphones that wrapped around the ear and had a piece of plastic that went behind the head. A really great set of headphones. I really like those headphones. But now I wear a beanie or I put my hood on in the gym. And those headphones, they just, they really weren't working out for me anymore. They were too, they were too cumbersome. But in the beginning, when I was using those for forty dollars, it was a really great investment. I I got a lot of really great use out of that set of headphones. I was inspired or motivated to purchase Bluetooth headphones from I think it was a Matt Ogus video that I had seen. He was he was rocking some pretty unique headphones. I think they had like some lights on them or something like that. He he claimed that the charge would last him at least a week's worth of workouts. And I'm not sure if it was like an hour workout or maybe even more, but yeah, I really I really like those headphones. They had onboard volume control. You could answer phone calls. Pretty pretty straightforward. Everyday run of the mill, right out of the box. Had a lot of great features. And so I then I, I have a pair of Beats headphones. They're the over-the-ear ones, and they're wired. And those were my transitional headphones in between. And I thought that I thought I would be able to use those, but I don't think my head is really designed towards Beats. I think that my head is a little bit maybe too big, kind of like I'm not the body type that maybe Hollister or Abercrombie is tailoring their clothing to. I don't think my head size is the <laughs> is sort of the size that that Beats is tailoring their sort of their higher end over the ear headphones to. Like on on these headphones that I use, I, I use them when I'm podcasting, but they're like stretched to the max. It, it, it can get no bigger. 
And so another reason I, well, I guess to make a long story short, I, I invested recently in a new set of headphones and I did go with a, a set of Beats by Dre and they're the, what are they? They're the Power Beats. That's, that's what they're called, the Power Beats 3. And I threw it up on my Instagram. You guys can give me a follow if you're not following already. It's at Ramon underscore Campamore. And there I usually post a lot of my stories. I've been sort of lagging and making actual posts lately. But on my stories recently, I I was my initial pair of power beats were on the outs. The earbud actually snapped, the plastic piece snapped off, and I had to go in there like a mad scientist and take some super glue and try to piece the things back together. But after a while of listening at the gym, the glue had settled and the headphones were fine. They were working great. They didn't break again. But one day I was doing cardio and I just got this really crazy, like droning noise coming through the headset. Kind of like for those of you who are old enough to remember dial tone when logging onto the internet, it was kind of like that. And I chalked it up to, well, maybe it's the app. Maybe it's just something going on, some kind of interference. So I waited for a few more workouts to, to just rule out any other possible causes for for that sound. And in, I ended up just deciding that or coming to the to the accepting fact that my headphones, though I've had them for the past three years, have probably served their time and it was time to sort of send them out to pasture and look into getting a new set. So that brings me to my Instagram story. And it was there that I posted. I made a few posts in succession with the voting or the poll feature that they offer on the stories. And I I asked my followers, I was like, well, my headphones are dying. What kind should I look into getting? I'm not necessarily going to rely on sort of public opinion to sway my decision on what I end up ultimately buying or what I would have ended up ultimately purchasing. But I was curious because sometimes when you throw it out there for other people to give you ideas on what they use or what they listen to or whatever they find works better for them in the gym, it might have been something that I wasn't looking into. And so I put out, purchase another set of Beats or try something different. And to my surprise, it was an overwhelming vote in favor, actually 100% vote in favor of purchasing another set of Beats by Dre. So I then put it out to another vote. I knew I was going to get Bluetooth. I knew I was going I wanted the wireless. So I asked if I should look into the Beat Studios, which are over the ear, or if I should get another pair of the um, Power Beats, the ones that they're earbuds, but then they have this loop that goes behind your ear. So it sort of helps them stay in place. They're smaller, a little bit more form, the form factor of them. You can just throw it in your gym bag. And it doesn't take up a lot of space. So it was kind of almost 50-50 for a good while. And ultimately, the Power Beats won out. And that was one that I was leaning towards because I already had a pair of Power Beats. I knew what to expect. I knew I got three years out of my last pair. I hoped that if I had got another three years out of this new pair, that it would be an investment well made because Beats are not cheap. And if you divvy up that cost over the course of three years and you're using them, like say you're working out five days a week, that's a good chunk of time. That's a good chunk of listening time and usage that you're getting out of these out of these headphones. So with that, I was actually curious about the Apple earbuds or the AirPods. I had a well, he was an old coworker who he got on the bandwagon with getting the new iPhone 10 and he ended up getting some Apple AirPods. And I had taken a, I had taken a look at him and I asked him about him. But as not a very serious or avid gym goer, I think it was more of an Apple fanboy purchase than it was like, you know, this is this is what I want to use on my every day for working out type thing. Like, I don't think the the decision was really coming from a gym motivated position as so much more of a I like Apple products. So 
I, it was something that I wanted to look into. And I, again, I threw that one out there on my Instagram story and I, I, and I asked people, well, what do you think about these two power beats or AirPods? And during that time when people were voting and tallying things up, I did a little bit of research on my own. I checked out some YouTube reviews, the Apple AirPods, they've been out for a good chunk of time now. So there's plenty of sort of three months later, one year later, like reviews that people have with this product that they can actually tell you, okay, this is, this is like after that honeymoon phase is over. This, this is what these, this product is really like. So <laughs> I, I made sure to watch those ones and sort of compare and contrast. There's always going to be those individuals who they are also fanboys themselves. They're going to be a little bit more biased when they're voting or when they're giving their review on, a, on any product in particular. But I needed to to get enough data or enough of a of a pool of sort of reference to then base my decision because I was also biased. I had a like I said before, I had a pair of Power Beats. I I knew what to expect, but I did want to try something new. However, these AirPods, I think they're still like in the 150, maybe 175 range. And another thing that sort of tipped the scales more towards the power beats was the memorial day sale they they slice like ninety dollars off which is a lot of money they ended up being 109 and some change for these headphones after taxes like 118 but still that's a that's a pretty good value because three years ago when i had paid for them i can guarantee you i did not pay anywhere remotely close to 118 dollars so I looked at it as an investment well made, and I walked away with the brand new set of Power Beats. Power Beat Threes actually has a new whatever chip that makes the Bluetoothness or connectivity even better. And all around, I've I've used it for the past three workouts now, and it's just been great. I the audio quality it seems like there's a little bit more bass. I don't know if this is because of my old headphones as you use them and as, as any mechanical or electromechanical device, it, it wears over time. So I don't know if maybe when my headphones were newer, they had the same amount of bass, they had the same amount of range, or maybe they've implemented some changes. I mean, this is the third iteration of these headphones and, you know, technology changes, they, they add newer features or they add better better tech in the headphones and maybe I'm just seeing that change. I know that I I noticed that for sure when I when I made the jump from the very first iPhone to the iPhone 4, it was like stepping into the future like when Marty McFly he's getting out of the DeLorean and he sees flying cars for the first time. It was it was a substantial change whereas when you go from say the iPhone 6 to the iPhone 6s, I mean the change is subtle. So Going from the Power Beats to the Power Beat 3s, maybe it was a pretty big jump. But I digress. <laughs> so those are the headphones that I use. I, I personally feel that they are some of the best headphones for the gym. And we're going to get into a little list of things that I feel are the criteria of what maybe you should be looking for when deciding on what kind of headphones to get for the gym. I know that for myself, I had my own list in my mind, but before we get there, I want to jump to a quick song. It is Bon Here by Emrod. So you guys go ahead and take a listen, and when we come right back, we're going to talk, about, talk a little bit more about headphones, and we're going to get into what I think are some of the best features when searching for headphones for the gym. Thank you. 
And that was Bon Hur by Emrod. Not really sure if I'm pronouncing that correctly or not. But anyways, hope you guys are enjoying sort of the the change up when it's sort of when it's a solo podcast and I incorporate or throw out a little song in the mix. I feel like it helps break things up a little bit so you don't have to listen to me talking for for too long. But wireless headphones or wired headphones and what are the criteria or what are some of the things that I'm looking at or what was I looking at when deciding to ultimately go with wireless? And now in the beginning of, <clears throat> excuse me, in the beginning when I was looking into getting wireless, I actually was using wired headphones, as I said earlier in the podcast, and I just found that the wire was a little bit too cumbersome, that when performing movements such as front squats, that wire just gets in the way. Uh, if you're wearing, say, basketball shorts when you're working out, or your gym shorts have no pockets, or the pockets are small, or the pockets are low, sometimes that cable, it just doesn't, it's not long enough, and it'll pop your earbud out, or if you're using a set of headphones, like say maybe the the Beat Studios that have the cable, it'll just pop the cable out of the headphone altogether. So the cable is a bit of a, a nuisance, And another reason is that when you're getting into powerlifting or squatting or deadlifting, that cable cable management is now an issue because you have a weight belt. So these are just some of the few things that I was taking into consideration before ultimately deciding on getting wireless and going full force or taking the deep dive into the wireless or Bluetooth world of headphones. So a few of the things that I had on my criteria in the beginning when purchasing Bluetooth headphones was the price. Early on, I was a new investor. I didn't really know much about the tech and I didn't want to go spending hundreds of dollars on a set of headphones that were going to sound worse than wired headphones that I had been used to, that I had grown grown accustomed to and that I had quite frankly grown up with. So I watched a couple reviews and as I said earlier in the cast, it was a weightlifter who was on YouTube by the name of Matt Ogus, who had a pair of Bluetooth headphones. I think they were Motorola as well. And I I took him for his word. I went to Best Buy and I found the next closest thing. It was the same brand, Motorola. I think at the time they were $40. Now, since then, they're now 60, I think 60 some odd dollars for those same exact headphones. But they worked great. They served me through quite a few deadlift days, quite a few back squat days. But the major hang up that I had with those headphones was the plastic that would wrap behind the head. When doing bench pressing or when doing sort of any type of movement where your head is on a pad, it was it was in the way. It wasn't going to work. And it's not like every movement was like this. But when I was doing bench press or when I was doing, well, I guess incline bench as well, primarily bench, it was in the way. And another thing that I had a problem with was that these headphones, they were very form-fitting. So if you wanted to say, at the time I had a, a gym partner who was very chatty, he liked to talk in between sets, and it wasn't a headphone that you can easily just remove. You had to either like prop up one earbud or ear pad or ear whatever you want to call it you had to prop one up and out of the way and hold it in order to hear what was going on or you just had to take the headphones off altogether and at the time I was sort of getting in my zone I would put my hoodie on and these headphones they were they were in place I was there to work out I really wasn't there to chat however I didn't want to be disrespectful or rude to my gym partner so it wasn't going to work. So I had to look into something else. So earbuds were the the next sort of obvious transition or the obvious next move for me. And w- before getting them, I did have a pair, or I still do actually have a pair of Beat Studio headphones. I was a fan of Beats. I was a fan of their look. Just the, the build quality is, it's okay. I mean, it's not the worst. It's also not the best. But for the most part, it it gets the job done. And 
I decided, well, let's go ahead and look into those. Because at the time when the Power Beats were first released, they I think they were advertised with LeBron James, and they were cabled. But their major selling point was the, the wraparound feature. They would wrap around your ear. And this was very appealing for somebody who was in the gym or if you're a runner or any type of extremely active sport. They're, they're going to stay in place. Now, a couple of the downsides that came out with early reviews of these first generation of Powerbeats, the Bluetooth ones to be uh, more specific, was the sort of the, the sound loss compared to all the other in the family of Beat headphones, that it didn't really hold the sound or that rich bass that all the other headphones had. And another thing was that it would let a lot of ambient sound in. And for anybody who works out frequently in a gym, you know that there is a lot of ambient sound. So this was going to get in. This was going to sort of break that seal that was coming with the headphone and get into your eardrum as well. This causes you to need to, or as a result of this, you'll need to then put the volume up on your device to to compensate for that ambient noise and it was one of the it was one of the first sort of flaws maybe about the headphones at least in the initial reviews the over the ear headphones i tried using them in the gym when doing back squats or doing any type of i just felt like way too much pressure on my head and when doing bench pressing the headphones they would just fall off they would fall back and another reason I like to wear my hoodie is to sort of sort of set up those blinders to to focus on what I'm doing. And these headphones, they didn't fit comfortably over my hood. And even if they did, that extra cloth was going to muffle or dampen the sound. So thus giving you like a, a well, a couple hundred dollars pair of muffled headphones. So I al- Going with the earbuds, going with the power beats, I took the plunge. I think I used like my wife and I, we had some some extra cash to treat ourselves to something and I decided, okay, well, let's go ahead and, and purchase a pair of power beats. So I did that and my initial reaction was actually good. I didn't feel like too much ambient noise was coming in. However, the place that I was working, they did allow us to wear headphones in one ear, of course, you you needed that other ear to hear if anything was going to was going wrong or someone was trying to get your attention. But it in a in a shop setting, it wasn't it wasn't blocking any noise. It wasn't like Bose noise canceling style headphones or anything like that. So in a loud shop, yeah, ambient noise got in. But in the gym, I didn't really notice it. Now, my volume wasn't all the way to the max, but it also wasn't like in the middle, maybe around 75% on the volume. And I felt like that was that was a pretty good headphone. Ultimately, it it bit the dust and I've got these new ones, but those were so, some of the criteria that that I had when when purchasing headphones. Uh another thing to to think about was Comparing it to other headphones at the time, I think the Jaybirds were another Bluetooth headphone. However, that one was ridiculously expensive, and I, th- I think it still is. But from what I've heard from people who own them, they're really good sound quality, or they have really good sound quality. And then there's other headphones that have like a plastic piece that sort of wraps around your neck, and then you got earbuds attached to tiny little cables. To me, that's too busy. It's just too much equipment. And these Beats, they have like a tangle-free sort of flat cable. And that kind of just works for me. So, yeah, those are those were kind of just a few of the things that, that I looked at when, when ultimately deciding on going with a, a set of Bluetooth earbuds rather than Bluetooth headphones or a headset. But... If you guys made it this far in the podcast, I want to thank you again for taking the time to listen. I'm going to go ahead and wrap things up. So 
If you guys are not following me on Instagram, be sure to head over there and check me out. It is at Ramon underscore Campamore. That is C-A-M-P-O-A-M-O-R. You guys can always send me a DM with any topic suggestions or any questions that you guys might have. I am on season two of my bodybuilding routine, so it's it's a few of the same movements, but I've thrown in a couple new ones. I'm still currently on track with weight loss at a pound a week. At least that's what the trend is. Granted, it does go up and down or fluctuate throughout the week. And if you guys are listening to me on iTunes, sure to throw out a rating. Five stars would be great. And a review. I think I'm also out there on other podcasting sites. I've heard that I'm on pot, like some, I, I can't even remember the name, but one of my coworkers told me he found me on a different podcast that I didn't even post my podcast to. But I'm currently, as far as I know, I'm on iTunes, I'm on the Google Play Store, and we are on Stitcher. So if you guys are catching me on any of those places, feel free to give me a like, a star, a thumbs up, whatever that rating system is, be sure to throw one of those at me. And if you're listening to this on YouTube, well, clearly there's no video with this podcast, but a thumbs up is always great. And leave a comment in the comment section down below on what you guys think. So I'll go ahead and end it here. Thank you guys again for taking the time to listen to this podcast, and I will catch you in the next one. See ya.